Well, hello and welcome. I appreciate you taking time out of your Tuesday afternoon to join me for today's webinar. I'm guessing that if you are here with me, you are familiar with Magento, which of course is one of the fastest growing e-commerce solutions in the world, serving something like 150,000 online businesses right now. Um, Magento is of course very flexible and scalable, but it delivers its best performance on an infrastructure built specifically to its particular requirements. And Running Magento or Magento Enterprise on just any server or with just any configuration risks site performance, and it also risks your business success. Today, I'm going to speak to you about what I think are the requirements, if you will, for a good Magento Enterprise hosting provider, the hosting essentials. I'm not really going to go into the details of how you're going to configure your server, although I will talk a little bit about that. Or or what you're going to do in MySQL. Really, I'm going to give you what I think is a 10,000-foot view of how to choose a good hosting partner, knowing what to look for to make sure that you're getting the most out of your Magento Enterprise business. Now, before I go too much further, uh, I should share with you a little bit myself. I want to introduce to you our sponsor and a guest that we're going to have toward the end of the presentation, and then also just show you our agenda. So first of all, my name is Armando Emanuel Roggio. I am a senior contributing editor for Practical E-Commerce. I'm also an e-commerce practitioner. Uh, I serve as the Director of Marketing E-Commerce for a multi-channel retailer with stores and an online site and all of those things. And we are very familiar with Magento Enterprise and running Magento Enterprise. Now, today's sponsor is Tenzig. Tenzig is a leading hosting provider for enterprise-level e-commerce companies. Tenzig delivers highly specialized hosting solutions to online retailers and system integrated partners. The company has been designing, deploying, and managing large-scale revenue-generating e-commerce hosting infrastructure for more than 10 years, and it has extensive expertise with platforms like Magento, Magento Enterprise, Oracle ATG, IBM WebSphere, Intershop, and others. Now, Tenzing has also uh, done us a favor. They've brought with them David Gita. He's the Director of Marketing. And at the end of my portion of the presentation, you're going to hear a little bit from Dave about his company, of services they offer. And then he's going to join me for the question and answers. And with that in mind, as we go through the presentation, please do chat in your questions. I am probably going to save all of those for the end, uh, and Dave and I will take those together and get all of those answered for you. Okay. As we move on to the agenda, really again, just four areas that I'm going to talk to you about, and then of course uh, Dave will talk to you a little bit. The four areas here I'll touch on, tell you why I think they're important for your Magento Enterprise hosting essentials or why they are essentials, uh, and try to give you a little bit of background about what has made me come to this belief, if you will. Start with support. I guess I need to put this a little bit in context. If you have your own servers and you have your own dedicated information technology employees monitoring and maintaining your web servers, you will no doubt have a very different perspective about support and hosting. For many companies that are going to be operating in a Magento or Magento Enterprise business, they're actually going to outsource that to a hosting provider. The idea is that your expertise should be in selling products, taking care of customers. And while you may have some expertise around configuring a server or monitoring a server, maybe that's best left in the hands of others. And that's a decision you have to make at a business level. I'm going to focus, though, on the idea of choosing a partner for this. Some of the things I'm going to talk about will certainly apply to your own in-house IT department. But for support, when you're talking about a partner, 24-7 uh, support is just basic. Things go wrong with websites at all times of day. And uh, let me do this. Let me tell you about uh, sort of a time when I had some trouble with the site and why I think this support thing is, is useful. This is a number of years back. It was actually one of the first Magento sites that I was working on. I had created a number of products in a development environment that was running on my local host, my local PC, and had added a lot of information to each product detail page, including some better images, those sorts of things. Everything was running smoothly in the development environment. I moved this to the production environment, which was on a server, and uh, the pages wouldn't load completely, or some pages wouldn't load completely. It was baffling. Why won't the page load? Everything seems okay. I was able to communicate with the hosting partner. They were able to take a quick look at this. And really what the ultimate problem was, I had run out of memory. There wasn't enough working memory on the server to load some of these pages or concurrently load several pages. And it was just stopping halfway through the process. The reason I bring this up is, again, the 24-hour, 7-day-a-week support is important because this could have happened at any time. In fact, at that time, most of my updates to the production server were happening at odd hours, you know, midnight, uh, 10 o'clock at night, 1 a.m., whatever it may have been, so that's when I needed the support. I also want to point out that it's necessary for your 
hosting provider to have the appropriate expertise for what you need. This is more than just being able to access an Ubuntu server. It's about understanding the code base for Magento, which of course is you know, PHP using the Zen library. It's understanding MySQL. In this case, if you know, I'd been talking to someone who didn't know how to fix the problem or hadn't seen this before, the fact that they were available to talk to me wouldn't be useful. They needed to also have the appropriate technical skills to answer that. And I found that frequently, as you're working through this, it's actually collaborative, or it should be collaborative. So you're going to want to have full access to the server the whole time. You're working on the problem from your end. Your hosting partner working on the problem from their end. You're talking to each other, seeing the same things, looking at the files together, etc. So that's why you want to be able to have that full server access. There also needs to be a sense of urgency. When you call into the support department or chat into the support department at your hosting partner, they need to be as concerned about getting your site back up as you are. They need to understand that when an e-commerce site is down, there are dollars being lost and really need to act fast, work fast, put the right number of people on the job to get it done quickly for you. Must-haves when you're talking about who your partner is and choosing a partner in the Magento Enterprise space. As you're looking at it, you're going to want to look at reputation. You're going to want to explicitly ask them how they handle these things. Make sure that the solution gives you the managed approach where they're helping you watch the server, willing to get into the app. That, for me, is all part of support, all part of what needs to be available to you if you're dealing with an enterprise-level e-commerce host. So here we have a slide that is taken directly from recent headlines. Um, we see Michaels. Michaels, uh, as you may or may not know, has recently had a, a data security breach. I could have put up several different things here. Um, I could have put up something from Target, which has been in the news. There's been a lot of these data breaches. And I bring it up in the, the hosting discussion because you need to choose a host that is going to work with you in terms of security and compliance. I'm going to take a minute and get on my soapbox for the security side of this. Payment cards, credit cards, in my opinion, should be inherently secure. They should be secure all by themselves. But what has happened, uh, particularly in the United States, is that you have the payment card companies, so Visa, MasterCard, etc., who have really taken that responsibility of producing a secure form of payment, and instead they've said that the merchants need to keep this secure. If you take a look at the breach at Michaels, I'm pretty sure about this at Michaels, at Target, what really happened or what some security experts think happened is this. You had the pin pad in a physical location. This is where you know, the customer is coming in and swiping a payment card, whether it's credit, debit, etc. And what was taking place is that credit card number was being transferred from the pin pad to the terminal, the register. And at the register, it was being encrypted and then sent out over the Internet for approval, etc. The hackers were able to get into the register, and I'm oversimplifying. I put a piece of code in there that captured the raw credit card number and then other customer payment information. The challenge is that if this had taken place, let's say, in England or at a, a chain of stores in London, this, this security breach wouldn't have been possible because those stores use something called chip and pin. I think the more technical name of it is EMV, Europay, MasterCard, Visa. Uh, it's their security system. It's throughout the world. The United States trails on this. And it would have prevented that sort of a breach. Other retailers um, will actually encrypt the pin pad. So when the card is swiped, that card number is encrypted sent then to the terminal, and what they get back is a token. And that's a better system than what we saw, for example, at Target or at Michaels. I've said all of this to say that while those are definitely data breaches that are associated with a retail physical store, I think at the consumer level, when a customer sees that Michaels has a data breach, they're thinking e-commerce too. And so it's very, very important as someone who's thinking about a Magento enterprise or any kind of enterprise-level e-commerce business that we talk about security. How are we keeping those credit cards safe. When you're working with both your hosting provider and then also you know, other vendors like your payment gateway, what you would like to do is really limit your exposure from a security standpoint. You'd love to have the server be PCI compliant. Now you can see my little uh, PCI data security standard screen here. This is something you've got to live up to if you're going to accept payment cards. You have to be up to the standard. This standard basically says that your servers are secure. And it says that the things that you're doing are the best practices for preventing an attack. And if you're working with a hosting company that has met these standards, you are not immune, but you at least have done the right things to secure your site. If your uh, hosting partner has taken the time to become PCI certified, 
it makes it a lot easier for you to take that responsibility away from your company, put it on someone else, in this case them. If you've got a payment processor that's doing the right things, you really are doing things necessary to protect both your customer and your company. I will say this too, you want to limit the way that credit cards come through your server or your system. If you're using Magento, depending on who your payment processor is, you might not even have to see the credit card at all. But a lot of times it will pass through your server. So it'll come from the client's machine to your server onto the payment gateway, and it may come back to you as a token or something like that. And you may not be storing it. At least if you're passing it through, you want to try to minimize that. What I've seen some folks do with a hosting environment is they've actually dedicated a a separate server for the pass-through, and then that server is actually the only one that needs to be PCI compliant. The keys for you are work with a PCI compliant hosting partner, make sure that you're living up to the PCI standards, and really do a good job of not storing customer data that you don't need so that you're protecting your customers. Essentials for uh, enterprise-level e-commerce hosting. Our next topic is storage and upgrades. I think it describes a few different things. It can describe the ability to scale at peak time. So depending on what your business is, you may have a peak time of the year. Companies that deal with you know, household goods or gardening goods may have a peak period in April when a lot of people are buying seeds or planters or other things for the garden. Anytime that you're going to have a peak period, you need your site, your server, to be able to scale to meet that demand. So take a look. If you normally have, picking arbitrary numbers here, 10 concurrent customers online, the load on your server is significantly different than if you suddenly have 100 concurrent customers online. Look for a hosting partner that will allow you to scale. Usually this is some form of a cloud server, but the ability to just ramp up more CPU power, more storage, more memory, whatever is necessary, probably memory and CPU, as you have more traffic. So that's part of the storage and upgrade equation for me. The other part is just the ability to add more to your server as your e-commerce business grows. How is that handled? How quickly can it be done? You know, a minute ago I used an example from a number of years back when I didn't have enough memory on a site to support a Magento e-commerce site with all the images, et cetera, that I had loading. So I was able to call up the hosting partner, and very quickly, in less than an hour, they were able to give me the memory necessary, and everything was working fine. Is your hosting partner going to be able to respond in that way if you suddenly need to add 50, 150 gigs of storage? I don't know. You should find out. How does that process work? Can you schedule it? How soon can you schedule it? These things should come into play. Even if you decided that your business is not big enough to have some kind of a dynamically scaling memory or CPU usage like a cloud solution, you may still want to be able to upgrade and do that quickly ahead of those peak times, etc. So you want to be able to work with your partner for those. Another part of this in terms of storage and updates can deal with the backup or the dev environment. How expensive is storage if you are making a significant number of database backups, if you are you know, storing a lot of media, um, is that media on the server, the web server itself? Is it on you know, some sort of a content delivery network? Those things should come into play as you're thinking about storage and upgrades in the context of enterprise e-commerce hosting. Sort of the last area that I want to talk to you about in terms of choosing the right uh, enterprise-level e-commerce host is the idea of performance, uh, the idea of configuration. To me, these two things go hand in hand because often how a site is configured will impact how well it performs. And performance should be one of the key indicators of your successful business. Minute differences in load times can have a significant impact on conversion rates and whether or not a customer will stay around. This is even more true in an environment of mobile internet where many of your customers may be visiting your site from a tablet, they may be taking a look at your site uh, on a smartphone, and they just won't tolerate slow loading pages. The e-commerce platforms in general can be heavy. Magento has taken criticism several times for being a heavy or slow platform. But a lot of this has to do with how the server is configured. I'll give you some examples. If you are using, let's take media files like images, hosting all of those right in Magento, right alongside of the application code, right alongside your your database perhaps, you may see some slowdown as everybody who's coming across the server is hitting those, grabbing those images, etc. You can configure your site, your Magento Enterprise site, so that you have a CDN, a content delivery network. Basically, this is where you've distributed media files on other servers separate from the app itself. Some of those servers you know, may be located closer to the customer 
and this can improve performance. So when someone's hitting the site, they're getting the, the body, if you will, of the page from the server, from the Magento app, and then those images are being loaded from the CDN. This could have, again, a significant boost to performance. Another thing you may be able to do has to do with the INODB tables in MySQL. Magento uses INODB for many of its tables. And just to oversimplify this a little bit, that form of a database table, all of the tables that you have in the database will be collected into one big file. That file can grow, but it will never give back, if you will, the allotted memory when you delete something or a table changes. One of the things that you can do if you're working with your hosting partner, and they are pretty savvy, is you can, you can set the NODB table to create a file per table. In this way, uh, if you did reduce something in a table, if something did change, you can give back that memory allotment, if you will, and get a little bit better performance. I actually experienced this not that long ago. I was working on a project where we were on our uh, website providing in-store inventory levels for customers since we're a multi-channel retailer. When we were doing that, we started to get a lot of performance hits. And what was happening was we were just adding a lot of data to an NODB table and then removing a lot of data every time we were updating the table, and it was just growing in size. So we talked with our, our hosting partner. They pointed us in this direction. We had some internal folks who had experienced this before, and ultimately we were able to implement this, use a whole lot less memory, a whole lot less storage, and have better performance for the site. So it's one of the things that configuration was able to do for us. Another example would be memcache. Uh, if you're not using memcache, you may want to. Good hosting providers, you come to them and say, hey, how can my site perform better? Very often they're going to come back to you with memcache or something similar, which will help your site perform. You know, earlier I talked about under support that you want to look for a hosting partner who has technical expertise, uh, including you know, not just the server but the app. Magento Enterprise, of course, has full page caching, but there's a lot that can be done to optimize that. And I have found that good hosting partners will often have Magento experts in-house who can help you to optimize Magento's own full page caching, again, boost your performance. Other areas uh, of the application can also be improved if you're working well with your hosting partner. Magento Enterprise includes the option for Lucerne, Cer Lucerne Search, excuse me, which of course is going to run on Tomcat. You can work with your hosting provider to set that up, optimize that, and you're going to end up getting better search results back from Magento. All part of the performance aspect of working with a partner. Think now about the, the you know more basic than that. As you look at performance configuration, these are the minimum requirements that you're going to need to have to support Magento Enterprise. So essentially, you're, you're looking at an Apache 2 system running Linux. I've actually only seen these running on Ubuntu. I'm, you can run them on other flavors of Linux as well, but it just seems to be the most popular. Basic PHP setup, uh, basic MySQL. You're not really doing anything uh, over the top. You do definitely have to have, for example, the memory limit. The, the minimum requirement is no less than uh, 256. Uh, 512 is preferable. Uh, I would even set that at 1024 because you're going to want to be able to, uh, to use that. I'm a big fan of Magento's APIs, so you definitely want to have SOAP enabled. There are actually some new REST APIs as well. But this is the basic setup that you're going to need as you are looking at a hosting partner. Now, again, I've gone through these uh, kind of quickly in the context of you know, having an enterprise level hosting partner and what is essential. I have not, as I, as I said I would not, gone into a lot of the details about how you're going to set individual things within your PHP INI file, although I did just mention you know, a little bit about memory limit. You're going to want to go into your PHP INI file and check that, but I haven't gone too far down that path by design. Instead, just trying to give you the 10,000 foot view, if you will, of the things that I think are essential in an enterprise hosting environment and particularly an enterprise hosting partner. Now with that in mind, I'm going to turn things over to Dave for a minute and then take your questions. Hopefully what I've done is uh, sparked many questions and we can discuss this a little bit further. Dave, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Armando. Uh, one of the first things we typically ask our clients is, what does their hosting solution look like today? And if you're like most of the clients that we speak with, it looks something like this. You have a managed hosting provider that's offering a variety of standard services things like managing data centers for you, providing redundant high-speed networks, doing hardware provisioning and hardware break fix. They may also be administrating your operating system and patching it, and delivering uh, ancillary managed services like monitoring, backups, and security. 
That type of managed hosting we typically refer to as lights on because it's essentially all the things that you would need to do to open your store. But if you're serious about e-commerce, managed hosting isn't enough. And here's why. All of the things we just covered in terms of managed hosting, which, which fall below this line you see here on the slide, again, are all the things that are required to keep your store open for business. But they don't really help drive your business. It's not until you go deeper than traditional generic managed hosting where you start to provide very deep platform expertise on platforms like Magento, where you're coupling those with advanced managed services services designed specifically for commerce and specifically to address issues like customer experience, conversions, search engine marketing. And then you're also layering on top of that partnerships, strategic partnerships with other vendors that help address the whole product solution of helping you drive more business to your store. Uh, and then couple that also with industry knowledge on a variety of different subjects. Once you put all of those pieces together with traditional managed hosting, that's when commerce really begins to be delivered. And it's all about helping you sell as much as it is about helping you keep your store open. We're Tenzing, and we deliver more than scalable infrastructure, fast networks, and great managed services. We deliver industry expertise across a wide range of topics, everything ranging from email campaign best practices all the way through to loyalty programs and fulfillment. We then couple that industry expertise with deep platform expertise on platforms like Magento and Oracle ATG and IBM, Smarter Commerce and Intershop. And then we marry that to advanced managed services, things like site optimization, multi-endpoint load testing, DOS mitigation, and application performance monitoring. And we combine all those with a singular focus, and that's to help you increase your commerce revenues and margins. Again, we're Tenzing. We deliver more than managed hosting. You can reach us either by phone at 877-767-5577, or you can contact us via email at sales at Tenzing.com, or you can visit us online at Tenzing.com. And thank you. We appreciate your time today.